work. I like that these poor little tablets thought they were in some type of hell, like, you know, for their entire existence. And now they're getting a new life and uh, they're fulfilling their potential. Uh, <laughs> in its actual intended existence. Yeah. Uh, what has happened here, though, is our friend Kmatch uh, from the community and in the chat. So thank you again uh, to Kmatch for doing this. Yeah, well, Kmatch has created the, the portal, a custom um, board right here. Pydos program right here, and I've got it set up so that if you tap on the screen, it comes up with a virtual uh, keyboard. And then you can just <gasps> go ahead and type in a command. And then type enter. Yeah. So, you know, you can take advantage of the screen too. I can type in something like turtle. And this will use the display IO turtle library and go ahead and bring that up. Uh, Hi, tablet. It's happening. <laughs> so, and this this is this is connected just using a uh, power brick, so it's not connected to anything else. Hello, all. It's been a while since I've made a YouTube video, and I have to say, if you don't make these things all the time, it's a bit of a challenge remembering all the moving parts. Hopefully, now that this video is out, I'll get back to making them more regularly, so I won't have to relearn this all again. Since my last video, there have been a couple of PyDOS releases. Most of the changes have been under the hood, but there have been a few added features, including support for autoexec.bat, the prompt command, the path, lib, and dir sep environment variables, and a new pexec command, which actually isn't a traditional DOS command, but allows the execution of Python commands from the PyDOS command line. But enhancements to PyDOS are not what got me excited enough to make another PyDOS video. Adafruit has been steadily adding boards and features that bring more capabilities to makers. A month or two ago, they added DVI support. This allows you to use a board like the Adafruit Feather DP DVI, along with an I2C keyboard like this one from Solder Party, to essentially create a standalone CircuitPython computer that plugs into most HDMI monitors. To show how simple that is, let's go ahead and do that now. All I have to do is plug the HDMI cable into the Adafruit board, then plug the I2C keyboard in using the quick connector, and then power the board. This power cord is actually coming from the HDMI monitor, USB-C port, and the monitor is plugged into a wall wart. So as you can see, I can control the CircuitPython computer using the solder party keyboard. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to an HDMI capture card to improve the video quality. This particular Adafruit board is based on the Raspberry Pi RP2040, which doesn't have a lot of extra RAM, so supporting the DVI reduces the amount of memory available for PyDOS. So a lot of programs that would normally run from within PyDOS, like PyBasic or PlayGIF, which is a program to display animated GIFs using Display.io, run out of memory. Fortunately, the RunVM program will execute a command after removing PyDOS from memory, which will allow programs like this to run. As you can see, Homer Simpson is clearly a PyDOS fan. The I2C keyboard is not yet supported natively by CircuitPython, so you don't have REPL access. But if your code.py file launches PyDOS or any code supporting the keyboard, you can recover from a crash with a simple board reset. And the new PyDOS pexec command will let you do most things you might want to do using the REPL anyway. With the recent work of Adafruit's Jepler and last year's hack tablet work by Kmatch and FoamyGuy, you can now take this computer one step further. Jepler's new update, which was just merged into what will eventually be the 9.0 release of CircuitPython, adds support for a whole class of larger TFT displays, including Kmatch's hack tablet. The hack tablet is a reused commercial control panel screen. Kmatch has posted a Hackaday project detailing the hack tablet and the steps he went through to convert the displays. The link to his hack today project is in the description below. About a year ago, Kmatch donated a dozen or so of his hack tablets to the Adafruit Maker community through Foamy Guy's stream, and I was lucky enough to win what I think was the last one. Not to worry though, Adafruit is about to release a number of these types of displays, and right out of the gate, the CircuitPython update for these displays is going to support a 7 inch display from Maker Fabs which is the same size as the hack tablet, but includes a boatload of additional features, including an SD card, I2S audio, and a battery charging circuit. I put a link to that board in the description below as well. The PyDOS virtual keyboard code is designed to take advantage of the keyboard abstraction layer that was added for Solder Party's keyboard Featherwing, or the sta their standalone I2C keyboard. The code I'm running today is on my GitHub site, which I've also linked below. It could still use some features. The backspace, the shift, the cap locks, tab, escape, and close buttons all currently function. 
but I have yet to implement a command line history recall or line editing using the arrows on the side of the display. There's also room on the bitmap to add a control and alternate key, so I should probably implement those as well. One limitation I'm not sure I know how to get around is that there's no way to interrupt a running program via the virtual keyboard. The way I've currently implemented the keyboard, it can only be activated when a running program calls for user input. Another limitation has to do with the display implementation in CircuitPython, or perhaps my limited understanding of the display system. I've noticed that the display I.O. terminal used to display the REPL correctly responds to a clear screen escape sequence. However, the majority of terminal escape sequences are ignored. This means things like the PyDOS file viewer, or the awesome MicroPython full screen editor written by Robert HH, which I use in PyDOS, don't work. I imagine this could be worked around with another abstraction layer. For now though, PyDOS tablets will have to forgo full screen features. To activate the virtual keyboard in PyDOS, you simply tap on the screen anytime you would normally type something. So at the PyDOS command prompt, any user input request, or anytime a key press is required. In addition, pressing the permanent X on the top right hand corner of the screen will cause a virtual enter key press without bringing up the virtual keyboard display. This can be ha handy when an any key press is required to continue. As long as I'm showing off vir the virtual keyboard on PyDOS, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the new features. If I run the date command, you'll see that it's correctly set. That's because the autoexec.bat file I'm using runs the NTP date command, which, is set, which sets the current date and time using the internet NTP protocol. If you get tired of seeing the amount of free RAM in the prompt, you can use the prompt $p $g command. to simplify the prompt. This could also be placed in your autoexec.bat file. There's full documentation of all the prompt command options in every internal and external PyDOS command for that matter on the PyDOS README GitHub site. PyDOS will now search for folders listed in the path environment variable for Python or batch files to execute. So for example, the pybasic command can be run without specifying the directory on the command line or changing to the subdirectory first. Since PyBasic imports libraries for, from the PyBasic directory, the lib environment variable also includes the PyBasic directory. The dir sep environment variable can be used to set either a forward or backslash as the directory separator. You can run PyDOS on a Windows PC, in which case the separator will default to a backslash. But on Linux or microcontrollers, the separator defaults to the forward slash. Setting the dir set var variable to the opposite value of the native file system may result in some inconsistent behavior, especially when running Python programs not written for PyDOS. That being said, setting the separator to a backslash does more truly mimic retro DOS and also has the added benefit of allowing command switches to be properly identified and therefore not restricted to immediately following the command. For instance, when the dir set variable is a backslash, I can more flexibly format the dir command like this. Finally, the pexec command is probably the most powerful DOS command, which ironically is not DOS-like at all. Using pexec, you can execute Python commands. For instance, pexec print hello pi tablet. Close enough. You can also enter commands that depend on earlier commands. So I can type pexec input board and then type there we go. It's probably possible to write a DOS batch file that would prompt for commands and then print the responses replicating the interactive feel of the REPL. Perhaps one of you is a batch file wizard and will take that project on. In any case, I think that's all I have for you today. Hopefully you enjoyed this look at a PyDOS tablet. I do have some ideas for videos along a similar vein that aren't strictly PyDOS, so hopefully you'll see more on this channel soon.